a little old school church right here. Is that all right? Somebody make some noise. I got a little help. Trisha Green, won't you tell them how you feel about it? Say it. the 
the Lord has made. We have come to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and bless the Lord with us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord.
good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Cliff Matthews, and I'm the very proud pastor of the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And on behalf of the members and friends of St. Luke, I want to say welcome to our worship service this morning. If you are a first-time visitor, we want to say welcome to the Luke, and we want to have you register your presence with us by going to Facebook Live now and in the comment section, simply putting, I am a first-time worshiper or visitor, and if you do that, St. Luke will give you some great big St. Luke love. Amen? And if you are a returning member of the family, welcome home. God loves you and so do I, and thank you for giving us another opportunity to lead you in worship today. Well, you know how we do it here at St. Luke. We want to ask, first of all, that you share this link on Facebook and invite someone to come to church with you. Isn't it wonderful that you don't have to live in the same area, the same state, the same city, or even the same country now to invite someone to come to church with you? So do that on your Facebook page. And then we want you to know that true to our African-American historical roots, we are a call and response people. So doing worship, you're not to sit back idle as if you are a spectator, but you are to be engaged in worship. And you can show your digital amens by using one of the emojis you have, or you can use the thumbs up or the heart symbol. Well, today we are pressing our way in the Lent season, getting closer and closer to Easter Sunday. And today we are continuing our sermon series around the title, The Color Purple. And I believe God has a special message for us today. Well, beloved, at this time, I invite you to join in with me, please, in our call to worship, which is found on your screen. The hour comes, and now is, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with my people. It shall not be written upon tablets of stone, but upon the tablets of the heart. We shall no longer instruct our neighbors from a book. They shall no longer need any teacher but the Lord. Waken our ears, O Lord, and speak to us the words of your covenant. Amen. Now I invite you to join in with us, please, in singing the hymn of the church in an uplifted fashion. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. St. Louis, let's sing this song together. Come on, ladies. Pass me not. Hear my humble cry. Come on, let's call him Savior.
Don't forget about us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. At this time, beloved, I invite you to join in with me in the privilege which is ours because of God's grace opportunity we have now to come and confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, rest in the promise of Scripture. If we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And to that, wherever you are, you ought to say, Amen. At this time, beloved, I invite you now to join in with me in our Scripture reading for this morning, found in the Hebrew Bible in the book of Psalms. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 12. And I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, where you will find these words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, with whom we have set ourselves at odds and from whom we have gone astray, the separation between us would have been final but for you. The more we tried to break free from you, the harder you sought to keep hold of us. And finally, O oh Lord, you brought us back, not with the yoke of iron, but with the yoke of love. Now that we are home in your tender embrace, let us freely take upon ourselves your yoke, 
for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. This is our prayer that we ask in your name along with Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. This is our prayer. Amen.
as we celebrate Women's History Month, we focus on our very own Lawana Mayfield. She is an advocate for all, for so many people, and she loves her church and we love her. So she is unapologetically Lawana Mayfield. Take a listen at her story. Hi, I am Lawana Mayfield. I'm a servant leader who has humbly served this community for over 30 years in various capacities, focusing on equity and inclusion. Luana embodies social justice for all. She set off firestorms of support and opposition with her controversial social media posts. Charlotte City Councilwoman Luana Mayfield hasn't backed away from talking about racial equality and police brutality on people of color. Unlike her provocative tweets sharing police dissentiment and 9-11 conspiracy theories, Charlotte City Councilwoman Luana Mayfield taking that conversation offline and into the community. This is a conversation that we never had. Called racial reconciliation through truth and healing, police relationships in communities of color, she hosted this Friday night forum. So I'm not gonna ask a current officer to jeopardize their livelihood or their work environment, but the fact that there was some here tonight speaks for Law enforcement and the community. What was presented tonight, this virtual reality piece, can seriously change the game. The first of a three-part series, Mayfield Hopes, brings healing. We need to start a real dialogue, and we have an opportunity to train our officers better. My community is majority minority, and I represent District 3 as well as the entire city when I vote. And when we have members of our community that are in fear, I have to take that into consideration. That's your driving force. My driving force is making sure that we stay a welcoming community, and it's hard to do that under language and things that we have seen in this current administration. She is an advocate for children and youth and any of those that are underserved and underprivileged. It was a $106,000 gap between all the organizations. So we have our discretionary fund that has about 200000 in it. I said, okay, that's less than 60 days before the funds replenish. So I propose for us to spend that 106 on the front end so that we don't have any of our children falling through the cracks. It does take six votes on council to move forward. Thankfully, my colleagues did support that, so yay, got to win on that one to make sure that there would be no gap for June and July so all the current programs are funded. And the reality that that impact of an adult officer, whether he's black or white, physically lifting up a young African-American child that looks like he's around eight who's in a playground fight with another child and slamming that African-American child on the ground, opposed to separating the children and teaching them to use your words. She is Lawana Mayfield. She loves her church, her God, and her community. Today we celebrate and recognize all the contributions that you have made to our world. Welcome back to the St. Luke News Network. I'm MJ3. These are your notices and announcements for the month of March 2021. We invite you back for virtual Bible study right here on Facebook Live. Virtual Bible study is the time to journey together through the Word of God. And of course, it's led by our very own senior pastor, Reverend Clifford Matthews Jr. So again, join us right here on Facebook Live on Tuesdays at noon for virtual Bible study. We'll see you there. The month of March is Women's History Month and is the month that we celebrate women here at St. Luke. So keep a special watch out for uh, the praise and worship team from special inserts in our worship service and special presentations all month long as we celebrate the women of St. Luke and the women of our community. 
it's the month of March, and so it's time to celebrate those birthdays, time to celebrate those special occasions, those anniversaries. Happy birthday, happy special event, happy special occasion. Take a moment right now. Let us know in the comment section, what are you celebrating in the month of March? Also, while you're typing, welcome first time visitors. Welcome back old members and friends. Type in the uh, comment section right now and let us know where you are visiting from and we'll be sure to send you some St. Luke love. Welcome to St. Luke. Thank you so much for watching this edition of the St. Luke News Network. Before I go, let me remind you to make sure that you like us here on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page at www.youtube.com slash St. Luke CLT. And also make sure you are subscribed to members in the know. All you have to do is hit the keyword no to the number that you see on the screen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the St. Luke News Network. We'll see you next week. Well, amen. Thank you all, and I want to say thanks for continuing to stay with us in our worship service, and I hope even now that something has already been done or said that has helped you along the way. And don't forget, beloved, you still have an opportunity to invite someone to join you now for worship, and I pray that you will do that. Well, thank you all again for all that you do for your church called St. Luke. Thank you for continuing to bless us along our way. Uh, we are pressing our way towards our goal of securing a new uh, system for us to make sure that our broadcast is not just done, but it's done with excellence and quality. You have responded, and for that I say thank you. Uh, we are moving in the right direction. And uh, just in case, I know you're probably tired of seeing it, but you know what? Just in case uh, you haven't had a chance to understand what we're doing, I want us to take another look at this video, and I want us to see what we are trying to accomplish to share this news and to support it the best you can. Uh, watch this video, and I'll come right back to you. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I'm Pastor Matthew, St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm here today with Greg Davis. Uh, Greg Davis is with a company that has been chosen uh, with the help and the investigation of Mr. Jarvis Miller and Mr. DJ Boyd to help us step into the new reality of digital ministry. As you know, COVID hit, we were not ready, we were not prepared, but thanks to the tireless efforts of our production team, our worship ministry, the leadership of our senior ministry leadership, Mr. Miller and Mr. Boyd, they have worked for six months to put together proposals for different companies to really help us step into this new reality. Because St. Luke, honestly, we can't go back, right? It's not possible. So our only option is to step into it, and to do it with excellence. So Greg is here because after all these months of working, uh, we finally have zero on his company. He's ready, and I wanted him to come today. Mr. Miller is here in the building. Uh, he's on the camera. Mr. Boyd is next to him, making sure he's right on the camera. And so we just want to let you know that when we talk about raising funds for digital broadcasting, why that's important why it's not just you know, luxury, why it is absolutely crucial that we do it, do it right, make the investment, and how that would impact you. So I want to turn it over to Greg. Greg, welcome to St. Luke, and tell us about this system. What will it do for us, and how will it enhance our ministry? Well, I, I appreciate and we're honored that you've chosen to work with us. And uh, the easiest way to explain it is I think if I just show you these are devices we're all familiar with. We use them all the time. Right now, this video that we're recording, this broadcast that we're recording is done off of a camera just like the one on my phone. It's no different than this. And as great as this technology is, and as much as we love it and as much as we use it, it isn't a broadcast camera. It isn't the camera that you see when you turn on your television every day. 
So what we're trying to do and what the what we're trying to do with this ministry is to help move this ministry to the next level in broadcast media and to what these cameras will do and why that will happen is when you're online, think about think about your day, think about what you're doing. You're on YouTube, you're on Facebook. When you're on television, you're flipping channels, you're going from one thing to the next. And it's important for ministry and if it's, it's very important that as you're sharing the gospel that people stop turning the channel mm. when St. Luke is there. Mm -hmm. And so you need a camera system that will compete with all of those things that the world is throwing at people mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And our goal and our design here is to help give you a camera system that is broadcast level, that is broadcast quality, that you look the way you should look, that St. Luke looks the way it should look. Mm. So that channel change, that switch to another page will be easier to stop so people can listen and it gives them that moment to grab that message and to hear the piece of that gospel that they may not have reached, that they may not have seen mm -hmm. without that comparison being equaled. Okay. All right, great. So Greg, uh, time frame as we embark on this, um, how much time do you think we're looking at as far as the ordering, the installation, and the first operation. I really see no issues with being completely ready to go by May. Okay. So uh, I, as soon as we get it in, we'll be ready to go, but no later than that. So you have a celebration in May, and yes. I see no reason that we can't easily meet that time. All right, great. So currently, you can't see it, but we have iPads that are on tripods, and when we come back to worship, right, it's going to be difficult to maintain the level of digital presence because the sanctuary will be in use. These cameras will be replacing the cameras that are under the balcony and up in the sanctuary, and they'll be stationary. So it'll allow us to make sure when you come in the building, you have a wonderful experience. <laughs> You're not having to walk over wires but it also will help us reach the world. So, you know, there's a Chinese proverb that talks about every crisis is an opportunity. And I believe that COVID has given the church an opportunity to realize that we're not limited now by our building, that we can really reach the world with the gospel, the good news of God's love for everybody by using with excellence this kind of technology. On the flip side, we can broadcast around the world and it look really bad, right? That's not who we are St. Luke. We are a first class church, a first class people, and we deserve the best. So thank you, Greg, for coming. Thank here. you, Mr. Miller and Mr. Boyd, for your excellent research and the choosing of this wonderful man here in this company. St. Luke, we need you now. Don't forget, we're trying to raise about $30,000. If we go over, that's great, <laughs> all right? But by $30,000. So I already told you, we need 29 more. We're giving one, my family, and we gotta make this happen. Not to make St. Luke look good, but for the glory of God. Listen, God loves you, and so do I. Thank you for your time. Well, there you have it, you'll see it again. Uh, I want to update you and tell you that we are over 25% of the way there. This is our third week. That is great. That is phenomenal. Give God a praise where you are. Uh, we're going to close in on this goal. We initially said 30. Uh, we had to add some things to that. It's now closer to 38. And we're going to get the job done. The question is, will we get the job done with you and your support so that you'll be able to be a partner with us as we take our message, not just in our local area, but around the world. Uh, we need your support, we covet your support, and we ask that God will lead you accordingly. There are some who can't do a thousand, and I get that, but there are others who can do multiples of that. However you are blessed, however God leads you, uh, we ask for your support. I am confident uh, St. Luke always does what St. Luke needs to do, and that 
will never change. Amen. We are getting ready eventually to open the church back up. But when that happens, if we don't have the camera system in place, uh, we're not going to be able to provide the quality digital broadcast that we have been doing. And I want to be clear, there can never be a time that we go back to what we had. We're going to make sure that we have quality in place worship, but we have equal, if not greater quality, digital worship. Because God wants us to take God's word around the world. And St. Luke, we're like John the Baptist. <laughs> we are that voice crying out in the wilderness. We have a message of God's grace and God's love that the world needs to hear now more than ever. And in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I even now believe that today gifts shall come, money shall pour in, and we will get this done for the glory and the honor of God. We'll celebrate it not because we've accomplished a goal for ourselves, but we are positioned to accomplish something good for the kingdom of God. Give God a praise for the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. God loves you, and so do I. Well, at this time, beloved, I want us to get ready for church and prayer. And I want to lift up to prayer and prayer those who have special prayer concerns. I want to lift up our brother, uh, brother Milton Howard and Leon, uh, they lost their son. Uh, their son uh, lost his life on last week. And uh, I want you just to lift them up in prayer uh, that God will show up and God will hold them close and let them know that God is indeed still a present help in time of trouble. Be in prayer for persons that you know who may be suffering still from COVID. Uh, pray that God will continue to touch and to heal. Pray for those you know who are going through difficult times. Uh, those who perhaps have had their stimulus money come, but is already gone and they're still behind. Pray that God will meet them at their point of need. Be in prayer for those who are homeless, those who are essential workers, those who are struggling. If you have a special prayer request, I ask now, even now, that you will post that uh, even on the Facebook live comment section, and we'll be more than happy to lift that prayer request up to God. I want to lift up a family friend, a member, uh, Miss uh, Ella Davis, a dear friend of our family, in a real special way. Uh, lost her life last week and was funeralized on uh, this past Friday. Uh, be in prayer for the Davis family, uh, that God would bless uh, the children, the grandchildren, uh, those who are caring for the children, that God will manifest God's self in that situation. Well, after we're led in a song uh, by our worship ministry, uh, we will come back and lead us to God's throne of grace. Have you heard about Jesus?
Let us pray. Dear God, in whom we live and move and have our being, how grateful we are for this, another opportunity to come before your presence, to call upon your name, to experience your grace, and to know the power of your love. Dear God, today we don't have many words to say at prayer. Help us today, dear God, to bask in the gratitude that should be ours because of who you are and all that you've already done. Dear God, we come before you today asking a special blessing upon those who are walking now the journey of bereavement. Touch them. Let them know the power of your divine presence. Let them sense that you are indeed still God and still working things out in their lives. We lift up, dear God, the Howard family. We lift up the Davis family. Hold them now close in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you're still God and you're yet working. Dear God, we lift up to you those who have placed prayer requests on Facebook. You see it, you know it already. And as they did so as an act of faith, we ask now, dear God, that you touch according to your will. We pray for families. We pray for finances. God, we pray that you bless those who are struggling even now, who've lost hope, who feel as if the world has turned against them. God, I believe today I'm talking to somebody, God, who's at the end of their rope. And they're thinking thoughts that are not good for them. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, now I speak power into their lives. And in Jesus' name, I declare that they are overcomers. They are loved. They are your children. Help them to see their potential and to dare to walk in it. Dear God, we come now praying for this world, for this country. And dear God, we pray that as you continue to work throughout this world in the midst of this pandemic, we want to say thank you, not for the lives that were lost, never. We want to say thank you for the lessons we have learned in the midst of this pandemic. We have learned that you are faithful, we have learned that you are with us, and we've learned that even in this, there's opportunity that you have for us. And now, dear God, we ask you to bless the leaders of our country, of our state, of our county, our city, those who aspire to lead. Dear God, bless them in the name of Jesus. And dear God, we ask you to go to hospitals now and touch and heal. We ask you to walk through homes even now and strengthen homes. Bless children who are going back to school on a regular basis, even on this week. Dear God, let them be healed. Let them know there is protection. Let your grace go with them in the name of Jesus. And dear God, I ask you to bless this church called St. Luke. Ah, oh God, you've been mighty, mighty good to her. Keep on blessing. Keep on showing favor. Keep on sending blessings her way. As she has helped others, may you show yourself real in the midst of her own life. This is the prayer we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who lives, who is our friend, and our very present help. And all God's children said, Amen.
As a part of the sermon series on the color purple, take a listen at our character for the day, Suge Avery. Then my feet can let go of the spot they stuck in. For an hour. Now get in my shave and don't keep me waiting. Left, right, 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 See, Daddy, sinners have soul, too.
Let the church say amen. Well, beloved, today I want to continue part three of our sermon series around the general title, The Color Purple. Today I want to invite you now to the New Testament, to the book of Romans, chapter eight, and I want to zero in on verse one. Romans chapter 8 starting at verse number 1 my God my God my God Romans chapter 8 starting in verse 1 or ending in verse 1 as well and I'm reading from the new revised standard version of the Bible there is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. It's short enough, let me read it again. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Jesus. Today I want to preach for a few moments from the subject Shook's open letter to the Pope. Shook's open letter to the Pope. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, where I am, you brought me. What I know, you taught me. What I have, you gave me. What I am, Lord, you made me. Lord, I am depending on you. Can't do nothing till you come. This is your servant's prayer. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Shook's open letter to the Pope. This week as I was working on my sermon series around the theme, the color purple, I woke up early as is my custom. The house was quiet had my cup of coffee, sat down in my thinking, reflecting chair, and began to meditate around what the message would be for today. It was early. Hmm. The sun had not yet come up. I was in a place, in that room, by myself. It surprised me, therefore, when in the midst of my meditation, a visitor showed up, entered my mind, and begged me to allow her an opportunity to speak. I recognized the voice. It was Sister Suge Avery, and she wanted to talk to me about something that she had heard. Yeah, she's been gone a while now. She's already gone on to glory. But her spirit wanted to talk because she had an assignment that she wanted me to do. She had a letter that she had written to Pope Francis. She wrote it this week after hearing his comments. And she came to me and said, Brother Pastor, if you don't mind, sir, can I have you read my letter 
and to the folk of St. Luke. Because I believe I have something to say that may help somebody. Of course, who could refuse Sugar Avery? I said, all right, let me have it. She gave it to me. I studied it. And I've come today to deliver to you on behalf of Suge Avery and the Suge Averys everywhere. Her open letter to the Pope. This past week, the Pope put out a papal decree. And that decree that some thought would be a message of grace and hope was turned into words that hurt. The reality is, my brother, we come up and sisters, we come up in life and we're told early as children that little cute ditty, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You have to get a little older to realize that words hurt more than sticks and stones ever could. Long after the healing from the sticks and stones, words have a tendency to linger in the recesses of one's mind, causing cognitive distortions, messing up someone's thought process, and leading persons to a road that goes nowhere but to desperation. The Pope said, when it comes to persons who are same-gendered and who are in committed marital relationships, the Pope said that that's not good. The exact words of the Pope he said that such marriages are not ordered to the Creator's plan. And to acknowledge such marriages would be, in his words, illicit. Sure, Gabriel wanted me to talk to y'all today because she wrote him a letter. But she didn't write the letter based upon what he said, what I just quoted. But the last thing that he said got under her skin. And here's what she had to say. She said, Mr. Pope, I heard you had some words to say to God's children this week. And I heard that you wanted to make clear that you have insight into the Creator's plans and that you sit in a position that you're able to qualify what is illicit and what is not. Brother Pope, I'm just a simple person. I don't have the education that you have. I've never gone to college, I've never gone to seminary. I've never led a religious organization. Yes, I am a pastor's daughter, but I've never gone as far as you have. Yeah, I know you know Bible front and back, and I know you're well-versed in the Latin, the Hebrew, and the Greek. I know that you are someone, and you lead over a billion people around the world. You are somebody. So, sir, please don't take this as a sign of my disrespect. Because I was always taught by my daddy, always give honor where honor is due. But, sir... I just want to tell you that I have a different understanding of what you said. You said 
God cannot bless sin. All right. I hear you. But I take issue with that. And I'm going to tell you what I think about what you said, sir. You see, I am a woman of color. My people came to this country not because we were immigrants that came through Ellis Island. No, we made our journey to this country in the halls of slave ships, coming through the Middle Passage, finding our way to the ports of Charleston and Savannah and New Orleans, where we were sold as cattle, inspected like horses, and sold to the highest bidder. There was always a sense in this country that black bodies aren't as valued or as prized as others. And so while I'm not as trained as you are, I understand enough of my history to know that their horrible institution called slavery had its supporters in the church. In fact, the same Bible that you use to talk about the Creator's plans, the same book you use to say what God wants, is the same book that was used to justify the enslavement of folk whose skin was dark like mine. They turned to sections of the Bible. They talked about what the Bible says. They even sent preachers out on assignment to tell my ancestors to go ahead and listen now because your enslavement it's part of, get this now, the Creator's plan that you were cursed with the curse of Ham, that you are not as equal to other folk. Your dark complexion is the curse of the Almighty. And you are to understand that forever you have an inferior standing wherever you go. Yeah, Mr. Pope, that same book that you used to talk about the plans of the Creator were used to justify whippings, beatings, violence, sexual assaults, death, mistreatment, unimaginable trauma, all in the name of your good book. So, sir, pardon me if I don't take at face value your interpretive methodology. Because, sir, if I were to take your interpretive methodology at heart, sir, my people would never have fought against slavery and never would have had the strength to believe that God was a God of liberation. No, sir. Because that book, that same book, Mr. Pope, that you quote and you say, is God's or the Creator's plan justified slavery. And so my people, browned by the sun, blessed by Almighty God, read the same book that you read, but we dared to believe in a different kind of God. Yeah, we couldn't interpret it like y'all did. For to interpret the Bible like y'all did would have only led us to more suffering and death. It will only heighten our inferiority complex. 
So no, sir, we rejected that. We practice what some call the hermeneutic of suspicion. That is to say, whenever someone as light as you told us what God said, we had to check it out for ourselves. Because every time we listen to folk that look like you, sir, it led us to more pain and suffering. So, sir, the first thing I want to tell you is, I don't read the Bible like you do, sir. And I ain't trying to change you. I just want you to respect the fact that the book that you open is not just the prized possession of folk that look like you, but even folk that are brown like me. We have a right to interpret that book. I ain't mad at you, sir. But first of all, I want to tell you, we don't, I don't interpret it like that. But secondly, what really gets me is that I know history, sir. And I know that the church that you lead, and I'm not trying to bother you, sir. The church that you lead is old. And the thing about being old is you have a whole lot of history. Sir, I read about the Inquisitions and how your church, under papal leadership, went about targeting Muslims and Jews to force conversion or else they die. Yes, sir, I, I know about that. And, sir, I know enough about history to know that on the issue of slavery, not only in America but around the globe, that your church was slow, sir, to act and to move. Sir, I, I also know history to know that your church, popes like you, sanctioned the genocide of native people because you felt compelled to be on those ships that went around the world. Columbus had some. And you really felt it was God's plan to indeed Christianize the savages. You, sir, your church, sir, was party historically to massive genocide of native people in South America, Central America, and in North America. Yes, your church. I'm not saying I don't lie. I have a lot of friends, sir. I'm just saying I find it odd that you talk about what God wants. But when I read your history, I see you haven't always gotten it right. Sir, so I, I know when the Nazis came marching through Europe, I know your predecessor, Pius, he was awfully quiet when calls were made for Pius to do something about the concentration camps and to stand up to Nazi aggression and to Mussolini's murdering habits. Pius hid behind his book. That good book, right? And Pius said nothing until it was all too late. Yeah, I know y'all tried to fix it up after the fact and argue that if he hadn't done what he had done, the church wouldn't have survived. But sir, last I checked, now is always the right time to stand for what is right. And whenever the church is afraid it would die if it takes a stand for justice, let that church die. Yes, sir. I ain't mad at you, Mr. Pope. I'm just saying I find it odd that you want to talk about what is illicit and what is the creator's plan and what is not able to be blessed. When I read your history, 
I see you were wrong a lot of times. You were wrong too often for me to accept your word at face value. Yeah, I told you I'm a preacher's kid. Yeah, my daddy was a Baptist preacher. Yeah, in fact, to be honest, my daddy had some of your same views. Yes, he did. My daddy looked at folk like me. And my daddy had a kind of judgmental posture because even though my daddy was just a few generations removed from slavery, he took your Bible and took your theology and used that book to speak against his own black bodies in the pew. Yeah, my daddy was part of a large number of African-American preachers who adopted a stance that contradicted his previous posture to believe that God loved everybody. My daddy, he disowned me. My daddy turned his back on me. Yes, I went to Sunday school, Mr. Pope. I went to church every time the doors were open. I went to Baptist training union and I went to the Baptist camps even though I lived in segregated the South. I went to camp and I learned about Jesus. I heard about him. But as I got older, yes, Mr. Pope, as I got older, I made some mistakes. Now I know you sit in a position called ex cathedra. And I know that when you sit in that position, you are considered the vicar of Christ or the representative of Christ on the earth. But Pope, can you take off your robe and your pontiff hat long enough to just be human? And can I ask you a question? Have you ever done anything that you shouldn't have done? Have you ever walked in a way contrary to what you thought you should have? I know I did, Mr. Pope. I was trained better. But as I got older, I just had something about me. I thought I could find it out there. And I went out there. I took my pretty brown black body out there. I had the gift to sing. I moved from the choir to the juke joint and I sung and moved my body. I pleased men and women. I did it all. I was Suge Avery. And I did what I did. And because of what I did, my daddy disowned me. I tried to talk to him. I tried to show him. But he was so committed to seeing me as less than. I get it. But one day, Mr. Pope, I was at Harpo's. And I was singing my song. It was on a Sunday. And just down the road, my daddy's church, they were having service. I never will forget it. And I also I heard somebody started singing, yes. And then they talked about, speak to me. I kept hearing it, and all of a sudden, I can't explain it, Mr. Pope. But all of a sudden, I stopped singing at Harpo's Juke Joint. And I found myself being pulled towards the sound of the church. 
as I did. In fact, as I journeyed from Harpo's, I took over the lead. Yes, I did. I started talking about maybe God is trying to tell you something. And I came on in to my daddy's church. And I came in behind me or the folk from the juke joint. Behind me was a train of folk who didn't go to church on Sunday. But when I came in, they came behind me and I got to the altar. I stood before my daddy. And on that day, he took off his glasses, came down from the pulpit, and I held out my arms and he grabbed me for the first time in years and held me and I cried like a baby but I told him see daddy even sinners have soul daddy Sinners have soul too. Yes, don't think I left that place and never returned to singing my music. Hmm. No, don't think, Mr. Pope, that I became some great gospel singer. No, sir, you see, what I was trying to tell my daddy is this, that God will meet you where you are. And I told my daddy, daddy, even sinners have soul too. Yeah, Mr. Pope, I heard what you said. And I want to tell you now what I found out for myself. You said that God can't bless sin. Let me tell you what I know for myself. I'm going to let you hold on to that. I'm going to let you put that with your biblical interpretation and your historical faults. But I tell you what I do know for myself. Maybe you right. Huh. Maybe God can't bless sin. But I tell you what God can do. God can bless the sinner. Yes, God can. So Mr. Pope, I want to tell you what I know for myself. I know what Paul said in the book of Romans. That when I came to Jesus as I was, weary, wound, and sad. When I came to the Lord just as I am, I tell you, when I said yes to him, and he grabbed me like my father did and held me in his arms. He promised never to let me go. That's why Paul could say, Now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, Mr. Pope, I'll let you hold on to your Thomist theology. I'll let you hold on to your Augustinian interpretation. But just know that both Augustine and Thomas Aquinas were bound up in their own sexuality. I'll let you hold on to that, sir. But I want to tell you today, and I want to say it loud and clear, I serve a God who specializes in blessing sinners. And I can't talk for you, sir, but I believe there ought to be some folk out there today upon hearing my letter that can testify, thank God he blesses sinners. Because I believe there's a whole lot of us who didn't always get it right. I believe there's a whole lot of us who haven't done everything we should. I believe there's a whole lot of us that have made some mistakes. But I'm glad to tell you, when we look back over our life, what we see over and over again 
is that God blessed us. We understand now the question asked by the song written by the singer Walter Hawkins. He asked the question or he said, I don't know why God keeps on blessing me even though I still do wrong. I want to tell you, Mr. Pope, God specializes in blessing sinners. So I don't need your judgment. I don't need your words. Because every morning when I bow, I'm glad I bow towards a God who's better than you. Every morning when I get up and I talk to God, I'm glad God talks back to me. I'm glad that my God, he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. I'm glad, Mr. Pope, that I serve a God who doesn't stand off and judge me, but I serve a God who loves me just the way I am. So, Mr. Pope, you keep on writing your words. I don't really care about it because I'm not part of your church anyway. But I believe on that great getting up morning when all the saints shall gather around the throne, there's going to be a whole lot of folk that you wouldn't bless that will stand up and give God glory. There'll be a whole lot of folk that you wouldn't touch that's going to be singing all hell the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all I believe sir on that morning when the dead in Christ shall rise it will be a whole lot of folk who didn't love like you love who didn't look like you looked, who didn't interpret like you interpret, who will be raising their hands saying, holy, holy, holy. So Mr. Pope, keep on writing your words. But as for me, I want the world to know I'm glad that I serve a Savior who loves me just the way I am. Jesus what a friend of sinners. I'm glad I serve a Savior who loves me unconditionally. I'm glad I serve somebody who won't do me like you do. I'm glad I serve somebody whose love is persistent, whose love is consistent, whose love is unconditional, whose love is strong. I'm glad I serve a savior just like that. Well, thank God, y'all. That's all Suge had to say. I'm glad, too, that I serve a savior that's bigger than the words of me. I'm glad I serve a Savior who sees me as God's creation, not some castaway, not some unqualified, not someone who's not valid. I'm glad I serve a Savior who called me in light of who I was. And I praise him. That his love has never failed. I'm talking to somebody today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. You are special. You are valuable. You are somebody. God loves you. Hold your head up. Walk with your back straight. 
Lift up your jaw. God loves you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God loves you. I said God loves you. 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 Thank God that God won't do you like man. Dear God, I want to thank you. For all the words that you say to us that drown out the words of folk who say they speak for you. Somebody needs you today. Woo! Somebody needs you. They're valuable, they're special, and they are your child. Bless them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God loves you. 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 And he will never stop loving you. God loves 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 you. Every part of you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Woo! At this time, beloved, I want to invite you all to now participate in the giving of the gift of the tithe and offering. I tell you, I am full when I think about how much he loves us. Mm. Woo, what an awesome God. Don't you let nobody send you to a hell they haven't gone to themselves. Don't you do it. Don't you let anybody send you to a place they haven't gone to themselves. Straighten up your mind. You're God's child. No accident, no mistake. Valuable in God's eyes. God loves you. Y'all, I, I got to raise this offering. I, don't, don't let me work so hard today. It's on the screen. If you want to, it's on the screen, y'all. Call Mr. Miller. His number's there. Send it in. The address is there. Use the app. Cash app. PayPal. Just, just do what God has told you to do. God loves you. 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 That is my benediction. That's all I got to say. God loves you. Amen.